So growing up, if you were anything like me, you probably watched a ton of pirate movies like these, and then decided that the pirate life was the one for you. This was followed by you packing your bags and having a brief conversation with your mother that probably went a little bit like this. Oh hey mom, there comes a time in every nine year old's life when they have to become a man. A pirate man. I'm gonna go sail the seas now and meet Jack Sparrow. It's been fun, I guess I'll see you around. This conversation most likely ended in one of two scenarios. Either your mum beat the living crap out of you until you realised that the pirate life was not the one for you. Or you found out about Google, and after some quick research, you realised that the pirate life was not the one for you. If you're wondering which one of these two scenarios I encountered, let's just say I didn't know what Google was back then. So the entire purpose of this video is to show you guys what it was actually like to be a pirate. And of course to crush the dreams of anyone who still thinks that being a pirate was cool. So what better place to start than with treasure? Pirates always seem to be associated with buried treasure. Gold, gems and anything shiny. But digging up and burying treasure was something that pirates really took part in for numerous reasons. First of all, when precious artifacts and gold were being transported, these transport ships would often be escorted by a heavily armed galleon, or it would be one of these galleons that transports the cargo to begin with. Now I'm not saying pirates didn't try to attack these warships, but it just wasn't a smart thing to do. It's almost comparable to me running up to a tank with a sword and being like, BITCH, GIVE ME YOUR GOLD! Oh crap! Hey Bob, there's a guy outside with a sword. D do we give him our gold? What do you mean we have a tank? Oh, okay. Bob says no gold, bitch. Hopefully you kind of get the point I'm trying to convey. Most pirate ships wouldn't target galleons because the chances of them emerging victorious were quite slim. But what about those pirates who were brave enough or stupid enough to rob one of these ships? Didn't they then go and bury their treasure? The answer to that question is most likely no. Pirates had a very short life expectancy, so planning for the future wasn't something that really crossed their mind. Selling the loot as quickly as possible before the pissed off parties could find them was the easiest and safest solution. So if pirates didn't steal treasure, then how did they make their money? Back in the 18th century, gems and gold were not the only sought after and expensive commodity. Oriental spices and sugar were a sign of prestige and wealth in Europe, so they fetched a small fortune. It was also much easier for pirates to target these smaller merchant ships, as they would offer little or no resistance when boarded. Now for those of you expecting these epic, well choreographed battles during the boarding of a ship, where there's a ton of back and forth, and then a Jack Sparrow comes in, dances around 50 men before killing them all, and then jumps in a cannon and fires himself to the moon, that didn't happen. Most pirates themselves were not well trained swordsmen, but what they lacked in skill they made up for in aggression, barbarity and downright disgust in this. Some of you may be familiar with the UFC, where you end up in a scenario where one fighter knocks the other one down, and then proceeds to throw hammer fists into the unconscious man's skull, and this goes on until the referee decides that his limp, lifeless body cannot continue. Well that's probably what most pirate combat resembled, except there was no referee. It was fairly common for the crew of these merchant ships just to surrender immediately when boarded, because of how intimidating these pirates were. And after all this isn't the movies, where one precise stab would kill you. It's likely you'd be bludgeoned with some blunt object, stabbed multiple times, trampled on, stabbed again and then thrown overboard for the sharks to deal with. So believe it or not, pirates didn't actually engage in as much combat as you would imagine, and boarding a ship rarely resulted in an epic battle. More likely one of the crew were made an example of to scare the rest. The entire notion that all pirates were criminals who did whatever they wanted whenever they wanted isn't one that was true. Pirates came from all different backgrounds, and each ship had its own code of honour that those aboard would have to abide by, so it was far from the mutinous free-for-all that we see in the movies and TV shows. Most pirates chose the pirate life not because they were bloodthirsty murdering psychopaths, but because it was their only option. But with that being said, I'm sure there were a few pirates who were bloodthirsty murdering psychopaths who saw it as their dream job. Speaking of pirating as a job, there were those who were hired to be pirates by the government. These douchebags were known as privateers, and they would essentially be nothing more than legal pirates which attack enemy ships and steal their supplies in gold. Now some of you may be thinking, surely pirates got to travel all around the world and sample its finest delicacies, the food must have been good. And I guess that comes down to what you really consider good food. I think most people can agree that a pirate's diet was pretty horrendous. Being a pirate meant that you were at sea for long durations of time, so the food on board would have to last. This meant that salted meat made up a reasonable portion of a pirate's diet. And that doesn't sound too bad, right? A nice tender piece of salted lamb, beef or chicken sounds okay. But that isn't what pirates ate. They were given the cheapest cuts of meat available, most likely some kind of wild boar anus that was heavily salted so it wouldn't spoil. But at least with the meat being so tough, you'd have time in between each bite to contemplate what a crap decision you made becoming a pirate in the first place. So now that you've managed to slide that boar anus down your throat, your mouth is probably as dry as the Sahara Desert, you're going to need something to wash it down with. But fresh water on board didn't stay fresh for very long and went rancid quite quickly. So small amounts of alcohol were added to kill the rancid taste. This was called grog, and you'd have to get used to this. Unfortunately for pirates, the salted meat wasn't the worst of their concerns. Their diet was primarily made up of something called hardtack, and this wasn't a nice biscuit with shortening and other artificial flavourings added. This was flour and water mixed together until it reached a concrete consistency, and this isn't me exaggerating. Pirates would often take pieces of hardtack and smash it against their fist or a hard surface to break it into smaller edible pieces. But at least if you had a disagreement with a fellow pirate, you could wait till no one's watching, grab a piece of hardtack and smash him over the head with it. 
Or better yet, why not smash yourself over the head of it and end the misery of being a pirate? You could of course season the hardtack with some more salt, but I'm pretty sure you've already had enough of that. Why not just grab a piece that's already been infested by maggots and weevils? Mmm, bug infested concrete bread. So the food sucked. The food really sucked. But at least you could complain to your captain and your quartermaster, right? Please, sir. This boar anus is too tough for me. Can I have some bread that doesn't have maggots in it? Please? Oh, so you'd like some better food, would you? You'd like a gourmet meal? Our boar anus isn't good enough for you? Will I sentence you to death? By hardtack? Oh, f***. It's likely that any pleas for a better menu would have been wholeheartedly ignored. Which leads us nicely to one of the biggest killers of pirates. And no, it wasn't other pirates, the British or the Spanish Navy. It was scurvy. Fresh fruit and vegetables were something that you wouldn't have on board. So it was quite common for pirates to develop scurvy. Which is not a pleasant disease to say the least. So to summarise, being a pirate sucked. There were no glamorous adventures, hunting lost treasures in cursed islands. The living conditions were cramped and horrible. The food was horrendous. And if the other pirates, the Spanish or the British Navy didn't kill you, then the scurvy most likely would. If I haven't completely persuaded you that the pirate life is not the one for you, then fear not, because you can always grab yourself an AK-47 and head to the coast of Somalia, where piracy still occurs to this day. That is all for today's video. I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained, reminding you all to eat your fruit and vegetables, unless you want to die of scurvy. Don't die of scurvy. That would suck. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Kill him with hard tech. Oh, fuck. Wait, hey.